Well, welcome to the Seven Figure Builder Show. My name is Julie Baranek, founder of Seven Figure Builder, where we help high achieving CEOs free up their time with gorgeous automations to scale their business to seven figures and beyond. And I'm here today with my friend, Jordan Aspen. How are you, Jordan? Doing all right. Thank you so much for having me on. My pleasure. I'm thrilled to have you on. So for those that haven't had the chance to meet you yet, can you tell me a little bit about what you do with your business? Yeah, so my husband and I run our business together. Um, we each were entrepreneurs previous to getting married, but then when we merged our business, um, we became the Aspens together and, and moved forward there. And these days, um, after going through multiple transitions, we're really focused on events that provide a transformation and are actually profitable, not just break even. That's a fabulous concept because <laughs> ultimately that's the goal, right? Is to actually make money off of it. Yeah. So usually we, we back our clients up when they're running these big projects, typically events, um, and we provide the project management. And so sometimes our team will provide other pieces of the puzzle, but ultimately our goal is to make sure that that project is managed well so that you can have a peaceful experience and... <laughs> Yeah, have everything have everything go smoothly. Awesome. Now, do you do both live and in-person events or where do you focus the most? Yes, we have over the past couple of years, as you might imagine, um, as of this recording, we're recording in early 2023. So the past couple of years have been primarily um, virtual events. And that's where we really got our start and really helped people to transition into that virtual space and host big events in a virtual setting, which can be really overwhelming. Yeah, and I'm sure. So then um, starting this year is really when we're transitioning into, or rather not transitioning into, but also including in-person events. And we're finding a focus in small, intimate gatherings. So for example, next week, I'm a part of the team putting on a retreat for about a dozen women. That's awesome. Do you find, I'm thinking with COVID, that people are just craving <laughs> that in-person contact? Like, is that what you're seeing? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what we're seeing. And um, especially the intimate in-person, like let's actually get connected with these people that we've been on Zoom with, that we get on coaching calls with, but that, that craving for actual real life connection is really what's sparking this expansion of our business. Um, in fact, I, if we can dive into a story right now, I totally, can share yeah. this, kind of the story of how I got involved in, in this event that I'm doing next week. Um, I have been following a woman, her name is Trina Holden, and I have been reading what she writes for about 15 years, we figured. Um, I have old magazines, like physical paper <laughs> magazines that she wrote in. And so I had just been following her on and off on her blog and, and on social media. And last year, towards the end of 2022, she hosted one of these intimate in-person events, um, sort of a retreat setting. And as soon as I heard about it, I, I was like, I'm in. I am so in. I had never paid her for coaching. I had never really interacted with her. I had purchased one small kind of digital product group coaching one-off masterclass type of thing, I think. Um, but otherwise, I wasn't what you might consider a raving fan or um, she didn't really know my name necessarily, didn't really recognize me, but I was the first person to buy a ticket. <laughs> and I was just craving this connection so, so much. And I didn't even realize it until she started putting out content about this event and it just resonated so much. And I thought, I'm not going to know anybody there, but I don't care. I just need somebody. So I showed up very nervous thinking, oh, what if this is just a click of her favorite clients and people all know each other. And, and I stepped into that environment and she created such a welcoming transformational environment that it just blew me away. It was not even a mountaintop experience. Like when you go away to camp or you, you mm -hmm. go to a retreat and it's like, yes, this was great. And now I got to go back to real life. When I went back to real life, it was transformative. My husband was commenting on the change weeks later at positive change. And it really shifted the trajectory of my life and business because catching that vision, I thought I'm helping people do virtual events and connect over the screen. 
I need to expand that and start getting this type of transformation that I received myself out to other people. So that was the beginning of exploring how we could help people do the project management piece of their in-person transformative events. That's an incredible story. And it's so amazing how you can take the virtual model and then bring it to the in-person model and provide the same types of services in an area that you didn't even think you were going to get you know, involved in, right? <laughs> like it yeah. sounds like that was a whole new world that opened up for you. Yes. I don't have a, a lot of experience, especially in, in a particular type of event in the business realm. I've participated in all kinds of in-person stuff in church over the years and, and all of this. And I realized now that I'm in it, I realize how much of those past experiences play into what I'm doing now. And isn't that how it is with entrepreneurship? What do you do? Um, all the things that I have done for decades, <laughs> right. <laughs> mash together so that now I can bring my unique expertise. And so that's really how it's, it's coming together. But then the other thing that's happening this year and, and part of what was sparked at that retreat was the power of community and how I don't have to know it all. I can pull in this event host, Trina, mm -hmm. and ask her to step in and provide coaching for a client or um, insight into my project management, look over my project. I can hire her to look over my project management and, and tell me where what I'm missing. And, and it just opened my eyes to the power of collaboration at a whole new level. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in that experience that you had and in what you do with clients, what do you find makes it the most transformative? Oh, let's see. The most transformative piece is being able to fully experience the transformation that is desired. And so what I mean by that is at this retreat that I was able to experience, I didn't have to worry about the basic things like where my next meal was coming from, whether I was preparing it or not, what was my meal plan? Did I have enough in the fridge to cook from scratch? Do I need to order out? All of these decisions were removed so I could focus on the transformation at hand. And um, I could focus on making the decisions regarding that transformation. Is this actually the way that I wanna transform? Um, what are the changes that I want to put forth? What are new habits that I wanna try? in a retreat setting, you have two, three, four days to try something new and you can experience it on all levels. So one of the things, this was a real um, identity changing event or identity, um, not necessarily changing, but just um, the, the focus was really on choosing the identity that we wanted to move forward with as, as women. And so we got the opportunity to do a whole photo shoot with an amazing photographer who really helps draw out who you are. Doesn't just pose you, but gets to know you, helps loosen you up so that you actually come through. And again, the compliments and the comments that I have gotten on those photos versus I've, I've done photo shoots. I was a model on the runway a couple of times. So I know what it's like to do a photo shoot. And this was just completely different. And that's just one example of the ways that this retreat was focused on helping me to embody and experience who I thought I might want to be, but I was scared to try out. It was like, I could try it on and I felt the way I wanted to feel. I tasted the, the things that I wanted to taste because the food provided was healthy and um, tasty and there was a variety and all of these pieces that I want to take into my life moving forward. I don't just want to eat the same lunch every day. That's just super basic um, and not that healthy but it's really hard to make that change yourself right. and just completely clear out your fridge. So in this setting, I got to make that change and try it on. And now that I know what it tastes like and feels like and smells like and, and looks like it's a lot easier on a day when I don't feel like getting dressed to picture those photos yeah. and think, no, this is what makes me feel good. Wearing this long flowing skirt just made me felt feel so good. So why am I reaching for my skinny jeans? Like I know that I'm going to feel <laughs> constricted. And yeah. that's just an example of how to get back to your original question with all of these examples are pointing to the fact that the, the true transformation comes by experiencing it, not just learning about it, but experiencing it. 
Yeah. I also hear in what you said, and by the way, your pictures are gorgeous. I did see some of them online. So absolutely beautiful. You're welcome. Um, The other piece I heard was being present, like having that ability to not worry about all the details and just focus on being present and also a safe area was the other thing I heard you saying of like being able to try different things, you know, within the, the spectrum of whatever that transformation is, whatever that experience is, but, you know, just have that, that flexibility to be able to to be yourself and to work through whatever transformation it is and just focus on being present. Yeah. That's a really great way to sum it up. Awesome. Yeah. It sounds like an incredible experience. And I also think it's interesting that, you know, we, we know in our head that we have these followers from afar, which it sounds like that's what you were for this woman is you were following her, you know, keeping an eye on what she was doing, really absorbing her content, but not necessarily vocal about, you know, that you were, engaging with our content, but, you know, we have these people out there that are admiring us and what we do with our business and respect us for what we do and really want more of that engagement. And when you open up that opportunity, whether from an event, both live or virtual or whatever it is that you're, you know, doing with your clients, um, that those people can really be drawn out and drawn to you, which I think is really cool. So for, for business owners that are just thinking about having something like this, what would you recommend for them? Where should, where could they get started? The number one biggest piece of advice I have for you when you're starting a big project of any kind, but especially an event, whether it's virtual or in person, is to establish your main goal first. What is the actual goal of this event? Because you're going to hit all kinds of um, bonus objectives throughout, but you need to really focus on one singular goal. It's going to really help with the decision-making process. And the the speed at which you can execute on the project, um, all of the things, if you can keep that North Star. And so some examples of North Stars that um, work really well with events is for virtual events that involve a lot of speakers, a, a great North Star is lead generation and expansion of your email list. And so if you keep that as your North Star, then you will be able to make really good decisions about how many speakers you want. You want enough that you are tapping into their audiences and getting leads from that. Um, But you also don't want so many that you lose touch with the individual speakers because it's really important to stay in touch with each individual speaker if you want them to promote and be truly excited about your event and not just be another summit. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Especially these days, you know, maybe two and a half years ago, there were few enough summits that that people would get really excited to promote you. But if someone's speaking at two summits a month and some people are, they're not going to promote you unless you're really engaged with them and have, have that relationship. And so therefore you're going to choose a certain number of speakers. So having that North star really helps you to make those decisions. And you almost don't know how it's going to help you make those decisions until you have the North star. And start actually thinking about it in terms of of that focus and that main objective for your event. So like I said, lead generation, a small in-person retreat is not good for lead generation at all. (laughs) Right. A small in-person retreat is much, much better for someone who is looking to add, perhaps add a premium offer to their value ladder. If they cap out at a certain point and they want to add a premium offer that is four figures, most likely four figures, um, then an in-person event for a limited number of people is a great way to do that, especially if they have existing clientele who are eager to be a part of something with them and get to know them even deeper. And they just know that if they put out there, come hang out with me for a weekend, 10 people are just going to raise their hand immediately and say, I want, I want to do that. I've been looking for an opportunity to do that. Um, that's going to be really ideal for that setup. And it's going to allow you to go really deep with these people and solidify that relationship that you already have established. Now, does that mean that you won't get people like me who have been observing from afar? (laughs) I was the first person to buy a ticket. So there's, there's all kinds of bonus objectives that are going to come. Don't get distracted by them. Keep that North star as your focus. What is your focus? Um, for Trina, her focus wasn't even to create a high ticket offer. Her focus was to pursue a dream that she had and 
to have it break even more or less. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit putting words in her mouth, but just to kind of sum it up, um, her focus was on initially hosting a potentially one-off event where, um, where she could provide a luxury experience for women who needed that refreshing and that transformation. And she nailed it so well that we all said, you have to do this again. (laughs) And, um, and so she did, and there are actually repeat people at her, her second event of its kind. Um, and yeah, the way that it's expanding her business as well is, is pretty amazing. Um, yeah, she has been coordinating various kinds of events for years, but this was the first of its kind to, to go so deep, so fast. And yeah, like I said, it was so transformative that she was able to then make it a part of her business model and then look for ways to hit those other objectives. Cause she knew that it wouldn't be sustainable to, um, to necessarily keep running events that just break even. And so that's where a team can come in to help more is to, to help you expand and become more profitable or go deeper. Or, um, so with an event, another North star objective for a small in-person retreat is to build deeper relationships with collaborators. So you may host an event where you bring in a guest speaker and you create an absolute luxury experience for this guest and they bring some of their audience. So it's not so much an audience builder, but you can play with things where um, you can partner with other people to make the event hit your objective. So maybe they have the objective of connecting deeper with their people, but they don't feel like they have time to host an event. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you can be hostess and your goal can be accomplishing their goal. And you can make a partnership that really deepens that friendship and that business relationship. So yeah, it's really looking at your business goals overall and thinking, what are my goals? Now, can an event move us toward those goals? If so, what kind of event? And then you can go from there. Totally. Yeah. And one of my favorite ways of working is to begin with the end in mind, which is what I'm hearing you saying with your event is figure out that objective and then work backwards to it of building the experience. Once you have that goal that you can start with, build that experience around it, figure out the speakers that are leading up to whatever it is that goal is. And then also sharing audiences is also what I'm hearing of so incredibly powerful as you're collaborating with other speakers um, and people as you're hosting the events and bringing people in, just sharing those audiences is huge to be able to broaden your reach across multiple, you know, we each have our individual audiences and when you pull them together, you know, we're all stronger together. So I think that's really awesome. Um, Do you use any type of automation with your project management or putting the events into place? Like, what do you find works best for people? That's a great question. And one that we are really expanding (laughs) and looking into right now, because automations can be so, so powerful. And quite frankly, I haven't done near enough in our own business and for our clients when it comes to the automations. Um, And so I'm looking, this is one of those places where I'm looking to bring in those collaborators. Um, I've got an assistant now who is much better with the tech side of those automations and is, is setting up those processes for me. I'm partnering with another individual who is helping us to build systems that are not necessarily fully automated, but act a lot automated, even if there is a person behind the process doing the things. Mm -hmm. Um, It's still more automated in that there is a dedicated process. And that's what we're working on cleaning up a lot in our back end, I can see the, the project at large. And then I've realized instead of putting together the, the mishmash of automations, like I have been, I really want to rely on that professional to step into their zone of genius and do it way better than I can. 
Yeah. And that's huge. I, that's my sweet spot. So mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll have to talk after this, but yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's huge as far as creating that seamless high touch personal experience where it mm-hmm. feels like you're talking to someone constantly. And it is that personal interaction, completely personalized, but you get that real time relevant engagement to bring people all the way through that experience end to end. So totally. Yeah, it does. It frees you up. It, it helps you know, keep people engaged into your audience It hypes up that event, like everything. It really can help bring that to the next notch. So yeah, we'll definitely talk after this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Engagement is one of my big focuses. Um, and where I have a little bit more of my zone of genius overlapping in this area. Um, so even my messy version has been pretty decent for us is really that engagement piece, pre-scheduling the emails so that when somebody Um, registers for the event, whether virtual or in person, they're getting those regularly dripped out emails so that they get all of the information they need, but not in an overwhelming info dump of, okay, here's your FAQ page, refer back to it when you have questions, (laughs) nobody's going to look at that. And so dripping out that content of um, if it's an in-person event, asking those questions, like, do you have any food allergies? And here's how you can prep for your photo shoot. And and just these little pieces with a virtual event, it's here's what you can expect the days of this virtual event. Here's when things are going to be live. Here's the schedule so that you can block out time in your calendar. Actually, here's a link where you can click on it and it populates into your calendar automatically. These are some of the automations that we have used and where I have really focused is on that engagement piece and really staying connected with the people at scale. Yeah. Cause that'll make or break the experience for them and yes. really take it to that next level. So, and also be a differentiator amongst everybody else. Cause this is something that pretty much everybody struggles with. So it can set you, you know, one step above everybody else. That's a really good point too. Yes. Looking for those opportunities to use automations to make yourself memorable. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And the onboarding and everything else, it just makes it yeah that much simpler. So it sounds like you've got a lot in the works, but looking for the year ahead, what is the most life-changing goal that you have this year? Uh, Life-changing goal that I am looking at is turning our process of running an event into a more automated, evergreen type of product so that someone can walk through it on their own time so that they, so that I no longer have to, um, get messages from people saying, oh, I can't fit into this cohort. Yeah. When is your next one going to be? Knowing that they want to run a transformative event, knowing that they want our support and our process, but having to coordinate those schedules, making things more asynchronous is really one of my my big goals so that I can continue to support the people who want that support, but on their terms a little bit more instead of on mine. Yeah. And yeah, uh, the people that you're talking to, their schedules are so crazy. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) being able to help fit into their schedules just makes everything that much more successful. So I believe you have some little ones at home, if I'm not mistaken. How do you juggle family life, wife, kids, business, all of that? Oh, what a good question. Um, Sometimes I wonder. (laughs) (laughs) I have a one-year-old, a three-year-old, and a five-year-old. So yes, we definitely have the girl. little ones around here. Yes. <laughs> um, I talked about community and collaboration earlier, and that has been a big life changer over the past few months is um, really getting into a community support system and a community rhythm that helps my children to have good expectations, gives them opportunities to not be in the house while I'm recording podcasts and things. Um and, and build relationships that way. And so literally we moved into a neighborhood where we have people who we have a house that children can go to that's down Mm -hmm. the street. Um, and so having that, that's been one thing is really pouring into our community, moving into a community that, that is collaborative is, has been really helpful. And then, um, the other thing is my husband and I being able to work together, we, work together on all fronts. We are partners in every sense of the word, um, at work in life. And so he does a whole lot of household stuff that maybe the average, especially the average nine to fiver husband doesn't even get the opportunity to do. He loves cooking. And so I'm very thankful for that. And so (laughs) 
splitting up the household responsibilities as well as the working responsibilities between the two of us has been huge. And it's such a gift to be able to do that on all levels because, um, yeah, we're not working around a nine to five. We can say you have more on your plate this week. So I'm going to take the kids more or, you know, our son has been really craving some outdoor boy energy. Would you take him to the park, please? <laughs> right. Burn it <laughs> and off. Being able to coordinate all of that, um, has been amazing, but yes, my husband is absolutely incredible and is a huge part of the success of our business and our home. Absolutely. I'm blessed with mine as well. And <laughs> he's the chef of the house and many, many other things. So the more you can work together, I totally agree with you. The, the easier it is for everybody. So that's awesome. So if you could go back and give your 18 year old self one piece of advice, what would it be? Oh my goodness. 18 years old. Where was <laughs> I? <laughs> um, I, I think the first thing, the first thing that really comes to mind is to say, yes, you are an entrepreneur. Um, you will figure this out. Gosh, I'm tearing up thinking about this. <laughs> um, because at that stage of life, I was looking, I had started my first business. Um, I had experimented with this world, but I was absolutely overwhelmed. I was being told, oh, you need contracts. You need this, you need that, um, charge your worth, but look at the market and it's just <laughs> all these different things. And at that point I was working in a very artistic industry and starving artist syndrome was a huge thing. Um, so people were telling me that I needed to be more professional, but I didn't have at the time any good examples of what that actually looked like in the realm of being an artist and being a creative. And so really looking back at that very creative kind of misunderstood artist in a lot of ways, I would tell her, you're going to make this work. You're going to figure out the entrepreneurship piece and you're going to fall in love with actually running the business, not just doing the art that, that runs the business right now. Um, and just provide that, that piece of hope because it was really easy right then to be short-sighted. And I did actually go and shut down my business and worked a day job for 18 months and hated it. <laughs> <laughs> and was not well suited for it and ended up by the end of it, thanks to gracious coworkers and, and, um, managers and, and bosses and such, um, ended up treating it at the end, more like a freelance job. I did so much work from home. Um, and this was even pre 2020 and all of that, but yeah, just, just to realize this freelance thing is, is, is your gig. You're, you are an entrepreneur you'll go beyond the freelance even. And so keep following that dream. That's awesome. And it sounds like it, as you started as a creative mind and you have a very um, technical, logical mind, it sounds like if you're really focusing on the PM side of things, right? That mm -hmm. both have really helped you out. It sounds like, you know, and to balanced yes. and taken you to that next level, which I think is really cool. Yes. Yes. Very cool. So how, you know, through your businesses, through your family, through, you know, all the things you've been working on, how would you define success? Hmm. Success is living the life you want and being able to have an actual vision for the life you want. Because I think about the times where I felt, have felt the least successful in my life. And it's those points where I'm so caught up in where is the next dollar coming from? Um, what's going to happen next? Do I, you know, even when I had the day job, do I keep this job? Do I not? Right. And, and that lack of vision. And so success is living a life where you can tap into that vision and pursue it. Awesome. And to take it one step higher, if you had the attention of the whole world for five minutes, what would you tell them? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> that is a very big question and a lot of thoughts swirling. I think that I would tell them that relationships are worth it and that their relationship 
is worth it. Their relationship with the world, their relationship with other people, their relationship with themselves, their relationship with God, all of it is worth pursuing and worth keeping as that ultimate North star. Awesome. I love it. Very powerful. So how can the listeners best support you in your work? Where can they find you online? Asktheaspens.com is a great way to get in contact with Paul and me both and to see what we're up to latest, see what our next cohort is, um, see if we've managed to pull together this, this evergreen version <laughs> and depending on when you, when you click that link, but asktheaspens.com. Awesome. And we'll have the links below so people can check you out. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Jordan, for being on today. I really appreciate it. This was fun. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed getting to know you a little better and thinking through all of these stories that, that have really brought us to this point. Awesome. 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 And you can find me at sevenfigurebuilder.com. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.